Alrighty there. Thanks for tuning in. Today's sermon will be um, titled something along the lines of uh, Newly Saved. Three of the most important things a newly saved believer has to get down. And the very first uh, topic, well the three topics are, this will be kind of a, a bit of a meaty sermon. Can't cover everything, but the three things that I want to bring to the newly saved uh, believer's attention is uh, ultimately, first and foremost, salvation, if they really have it. And the second topic is foundation. And the last topic will be dispensation. So for salvation, follow along in your King James Bible. We're going to discuss salvation. That will be part of topic number two, foundation, God's Word, the King James Bible. So if you're newly saved or you're not quite sure, follow along. These are three of the most important things any um, new believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, member of the Church of the Living God, has to grasp. Salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, says here, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, and if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. That last little bit's very um, important there, unless you have believed in vain. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received of Christ, died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures that's the gospel in the nutshell but how do we really apply it and really you know have faith in that gospel and change to truly be saved it's there but it says a lot of people have believed in vain they believe in vain so to help clear up some confusion, so you, uh, whoever you may be, are watching, don't quite uh, get trapped or tricked. We're going to go over a few few more scriptures in regards to salvation. Second Corinthians, turn there, chapter seven. This is a very familiar verse. A lot of the brethren know it says, "For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of." But the sorrow of the world worketh death. Godly sorrow. Sorrow towards God. A lot of people confess, yes, oh, we're all sinners. But they have that sorrow towards God. The one you, sinner, have sinned against. That real godly sorrow, oh Lord. There's a couple more verses there, uh, 9 and 11. You'll have to get the context, but it sort of uh, expounds on that godly sorrow. So feel free to read those as well. But we're going to turn to Mark chapter 2. Mark 2, 17. It says here, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick, that came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Are you sick? Are you sick and tired of the life you're living, life of sin, and living in darkness, stuck in bondage. Are you sick of it? few more verses for the salvation topic. Psalm 5. We're going to go there real quick. Psalm 5. Verse 2 and 3. It says, Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. The Lord wants to hear your voice wants to hear your cry, your prayer. Psalm 
Psalm 6. This is just a nice little psalm to include, things to consider. It says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, neither chase me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. Sinner, you're weak. Save sinner, I'm weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. Save me for thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance to thee. In the grave who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxeth old because of all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. There's a lot, of, a lot of great stuff in that psalm, Psalm 6. So all, the, the gist of it is so crying to the Lord, putting your prayer to God, bringing it to Him. And if you're not quite sure if you're saved, take heed. But to clear up some of that confusion you may be having is we're going to turn to Romans chapter 10, the book of Romans, in regards to this salvation. Start in verse 8. It says here, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There you have it. Call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there's like uh, nowadays they're giving, there's all these false gods, trinities, pagan gods, and all that stuff. But it's the Lord Jesus Christ, the one and only God who you call upon. 1 Corinthians, we'll turn there. Got a few verses to consider and think about. Chapter 1 says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God in Sothenice, maybe I butchered that, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corneth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Here's the key. With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, us, brethren, we're waiting for the coming of our Lord, who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom... You were called on the fellowship of a son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Some very nice nice verses there, but verse 2 specifically says, uh, With all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. There you go. Excuse me. Now let's consider um, topic number 2 in this sermon. So that's um, the gist of salvation. It's um, I just uh, shared there from God's Word. But now, topic number two, God's Word. Go to John. We're going to go there first. John 14, talking about God's Word. What is God's Word? John 14. John 14, we're going to start in verse 16. 24 it says uh, and I will pray the, fa the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you 
I will, excuse me, it says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while in the world seeth me no more, but you shall see me because I live. You, ye shall live also. And that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will make or excuse me, it says, We will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you heard is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. A lot of, a lot of interesting verses there talking about keeping the Lord's sayings, keeping his words. And that word is the Holy Bible, King James. Now turn to Psalms chapter 12. Psalms 12, 6 and 7, it says here, The words of the Lord are pure words, silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. It's a promise of God. Keep his words. Preserve them. Now turn to Psalm 138, verse 2. One thirty-eight it says here, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. The word is very, very, very important. How are you going to go about your walk with the Lord? Once you have his word, once you're sure of your salvation, another verse very key in regards to the foundation John 17 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth now let's um, just uh, consider a bit of instruction in righteousness Revelation 22 the very last chapter of the Bible Revelation 22, regards to foundation. Verses to consider, 18 and 19, here, it says, um, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city from the things which are written in this book. You don't mess with the word. God will, um, what's it just says here, seriously chasing you. If you're saved, if you're lost, well, you're just going to be sent to hell, cast to hell. So saved people don't mess with the book. Lost people, well, they're the ones that authorized all those, um, what they call versions of the Bible which are all false, all pagan, all Catholic. Now I'll turn to Psalms 119. Verse 9. Foundation, Psalm 119, verse 9. It says, uh, where false shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed there to according to thy word. And verse 11, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Get to know the Lord by knowing the word. Get in the book. Especially to what they call the babes in Christ. Get in the book. It's the most important thing. You have to get into the book. 
Now we're going to briefly talk about, uh, this is a very big subject as well, but um, dispensation, dispensationalism. We're going to briefly talk about that. i got a fair bit of verses to cover. I think what I'll do is I'll link a few uh, studies to dispensationalism at some point to the video here under uh, the description. This is a big topic and uh, I still need a bit more study but I understand it. I just for the verses and all that different verses to reference there's a lot but uh, dispensationalism let's cover that briefly. This is the third most important thing you got to understand if you're newly saved. 2 Timothy 2.15 says here Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Here it is, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing. Just a brief example for anyone that may have the basics of understanding, like if you know like there are the Old Testament, New Testament and all that. A, a simplistic example is we're not offering animal sacrifices anymore. There's been one sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, there's no animal sacrifices. And we're going to go to uh, another psalm real quick before we dive right into this. I write this down. Where is it? Psalm 51, verse 17, Sacrifices. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Jesus, you realize your lost state? You get saved. Your heart gets right. But to make it clear, is we're not offering animal sacrifices. There's a lot of these... Um, don't know a lot about it, but there's these Hebrew root movements, messianic things. I, I think that's similar to Hebrew roots. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But all these type of work-based salvation scenarios and groups and cults and people that don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross, they're not rightly dividing the word. They probably don't, well, they don't believe the word. Simple as that. Let's go uh, briefly, let's discuss some of this. Turn to Acts chapter 9. Rightly dividing dispensation. Acts chapter 9. One through six. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went on to the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue said if he found any on this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and he said because Paul Saul was um, Paul Paul Saul anyways <laughs> Uh, he's persecuted on the the church of the living God. It's before his conversion. Verse 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told what thou must do. And continuing, we'll read down to verse 15. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand, and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days out of sight, neither did eat nor drink. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and said to him, and he, to him said, The Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Arise, behold, I, I am here, Lord. 
The Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And, he, and here hath he authority from the chief priest to, bond, to bind, yeah, that's what he's looking for, to bind all that call on thy name. There it is again, call on the name of the Lord. Verse 14, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him, how, for I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. If you do more study, I don't have the verses written down, but basically before Paul's conversion, he was um, a Pharisee of the highest order in the Judaism, I guess is what it would be called. And uh, they're working for their salvation. And uh, basically Paul got converted, as it says here. So a few more verses to consider. Turn to Acts 13. There's this whole dispensation. Acts thirteen forty two to forty eight it says here and when the Jews who were gone out of the synagogue the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath the non Jews they wanted to hear the word of God now when the congregation was broken up many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas who speaking to them persuade them to continue in the grace of God and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of excuse me to hear the word of God but when the when the Jews saw the multitudes they were filled with envy spake against those things which were spoken by Paul contradicting and blaspheming that's what's uh, going on many religious people nowadays call religious people uh, they speak against the Word of God and they contradict and it's not right and it's not so and on and on and on. Verse 46, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the Word of God should first have been spoken unto you, but seeing you have put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the regions. We'll stop there. A few chapters over. Verse uh, Acts 26. 